Rolling. <laughs> Rolling. Let me get this. Oh, God. All right. Welcome back to Bon Manzanook. We're here in the kitchen, and this is really awkward because I have this camera up super high, and I have to, you know, like, crane my neck up to, like, see, to look into the camera lens, which I'm supposed to do. Okay. Yeah, so I'm looking right at you. The camera's really high. It's hurting my neck. So I think this camera actually should not be the camera that I look into. It should be the camera that's like pointed straight down the counter, counter so you can see uh, the tortillas as they're being um, mixed and pressed and made and everything, like ho the whole process, you know? I think that's what's gonna hap have to happen. So give me just a moment. I'm gonna change the angle and I'll be right back. Okay, thanks. Got my water, got the tortilla cam. You can see it up there, hi, tortilla cam. So. I'm going to first start by flipping on the tortilla cooker, which is actually, it's not even a tortilla cooker. It's a crepe, it's a crepe machine, you know, crepe cooker that's being used as a tortilla um, cooker. So then we have this lovely tortilla press and I have to remember which camera to look into. I'm still learning how to do this. This is a, this is a live thing. We're not, we're not editing this. Just trimming the beginning and the end. So we've got some um, some papers here that we're going to use. And what else are we going to do? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so what I actually need to do is get out the tortilla mix and put it in a bowl. So we're going to start with that. It's moved over there. Get a bowl. Here's our bowl beautiful bowl. Isn't that nice? Got some weird microphone buzzing in the background. Something. Oh my God, I almost dropped the tortilla mix all over. Okay, so I think what I'm going to make is a kind of a larger batch. So I'm going to do two, do two cups. So I got my cup measurement and I'm going to go ahead and the two cups of my bulk tortilla mix. This is a cassava tortilla mix. It's grain free, sugar free, delightful, staple of every meal. Make tacos out of it. But I actually just like to eat it with a little bit of grass fed butter. That's kind of my favorite way of um, interacting with the tortillas. But tacos are great too, and you can dip them in things and all kinds of stuff. The sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. Okay, so one thing you need to add to this tortilla mix is water, and the other thing that you need to add is oil. And I know they say that water and oil don't mix, but in this case they mix, because they mix into the tortilla mix. And that's what makes these tortillas work so well, is having the water and the oil. So even things that people think don't go together can. Isn't that delightful? Isn't that refreshing? Okay, I need my measuring cup and I always have, my measuring cup is always in some weird spot. So I just found it, so I've got it. And so now I'm gonna put some well water in it. I'm lucky enough to live on a farm with well water, on a blueberry farm here. And so I can just take the water out of the tap and it's such a luxury because I'm used to having water filters everywhere that I've been pretty much. Mm -hmm. So having well water is like a, it's a special thing. And I just hope that, that you either have well water or you have a chance to enjoy well water at some point and not just be on city water all the time and have to filter in all that crap. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and just um, do it by, by visual here. So um, per cup, it's two, two dashes of avocado oil and you can get this at Grocery Outlet for pretty cheap. So it's, um, yeah, just check out Grocery Outlet for that avocado oil. It's not a product placement. Grocery Outlet is not on my Patreon. If Grocery Outlet is not, is doing it, so if anybody's doing a product placement on Bon Bon Snook, you'll know because on the Patreon, you'll see them. So it would be like somebody representing that company at least because I'm not going to take any product placement or even any communications from from anybody unless they go on the Patreon. That's my little scheme. You go on the Patreon, you pay $9 a month, and then if you 
um, if you have an underwear company, you can you can be like, hey, we got this awesome underwear. It like protects you from EMFs, and then and then I could be like, eh, actually, that's not quite the right fit for Bon Bon's Nook, but they will have paid nine dollars for one month, so they support the show. Hooray! Everybody wins, and they've got the budget to do it. Is write it off marketing budget. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Nine bucks. It's gonna be okay. Okay, so two cups of tortilla mix means four dashes of avocado oil. So here we go. One, two, three, four. And it makes a cool sound too. So that's always fun. And we're off. So now we, we're off to see the wizard. The wonderful wizard of tortillas and cassava. Don't worry about that man behind the curtain. The man behind the curtain is just, he just didn't have a good childhood. Yeah, the man behind the curtain is a little insecure. He didn't have a good childhood. And now he's running part of the world. And so that's kind of the root of the problem, isn't it? Yeah, but really he just needs some reassurance and a little bit of community attention. He needs a community and he needs a tribe and he needs to go have some ayahuasca and he needs to go have a mushroom ceremony and maybe some peyote and maybe some LSD at a dead show. Dead and company still touring. That's very convenient. So if you're a corporate exec that didn't have a good childhood and you're making bad choices with your tech company, all you got to do is go to a dead show and have some, have a dose of community and abundance in a true way and not in a money on your bank statement uh, in your 401 um, uh, crypto wallet uh, hedge fund kind of situation yeah it's more like having that um, abundance in a community like oh this person these people actually care about me and they don't even know me they're just strangers but they still they love me though for some reason why is that why is everybody so loving here why is music so unifying why are group experiences where we listen to music so unifying i've been thinking about that a lot actually and that's really powerful the whole like live music in a crowd with people that are all there for the same thing and they're all experiencing the same thing and the vibrations of the music coming through everybody in the same way. So it's like when you have a group event and there's no music, it's not quite as unifying as when you have something to focus on and something that's really shared that's going through everybody's ears. And so, yeah, it's, I've just been thinking about that a lot. So I'm getting sidetracked, but I want to keep making these tortillas for you. So, or for me, I'm going to eat them actually, but you know you can pretend that you're eating them i guess i don't know so yeah this is the magic of youtube right youtubers youtuber being a youtuber being an influencer yes yes i my goal is to become a tortilla influencer will you help me reach that goal for just number nine dollars a month you too could help support bon bon's nook in the world help me pay my cottage rent I just need three Patreon. I just need three Patreons on the Patreon, patrons on the Patreon to help me pay my piper. So if I can pay my piper, then I can keep making sh Oh, memory card is full. Okay, so we lost that camera. I'm really sorry. So now all we have is this camera. So I can't even look at you anymore. So that's gonna actually keep me focused on the task at hand, which is making these freaking tortillas that I can't seem to finish. But at least this thing is nice and warm. So if you feel that, ah, that's warm. That's ready. So so now I'm just gonna pour in my cup. And it's gonna be, since I did two cups, oh, I can't even remember. You know what? I'm gonna just have more water ready because the nature of working with these tortilla, this tortilla mix is that it's really easy except for the water part. Like you just have to be careful about the water that you don't put too much in and uh, kind of just, you know, like get it started, get start getting messy with your hands. This is very hands-on. And so this is a good thing to do with your kids or with yourself or just to relax at the end of the day because you didn't have your stress ball when you're at your office job. Wait a minute, who has office jobs anymore, right? Okay, so that's an old paradigm. We're not even gonna make fun of an old paradigm. So now that you have your home job that where you can work from your pajamas on your blueberry farm in your cottage 
and then you're you have fresh air and you're not having to sit in your car and listen to Joe Rogan podcasts forever it's as good as they are you know it's like you have a chance to like connect with nature finally and you're not just stuck in this like commute you know to some weird uh, building that is it just kind of designed like a, a mental institution or something you know it's like it's pretty strange but it's an old paradigm so we don't even need to make fun of it anymore it's, it's already fading that fast that office that office commute office job kind of thing it's an old it's an old tale so we're just working with this here i can already tell there's not enough water so if if you just start to add some water you can just kind of feel it it's just a feeling thing you know you just get a vibe about it like is there enough liquid in this tortilla mix are these tortillas gonna press easily and are they gonna you know be easy to, to flip off the paper onto the, the tortilla cooker which is actually the crepe maker you know so oh my god just flip some out of I'm getting a little too excited here. I'm going to add some more water, chill things out. I'm going to use two hands. So when you start going to two hands, that's when you really start getting some work done. Yep. Two hands is where it's at. You hear that in there? Oh, I actually, that was my beard. It wasn't, this is my beard on the microphone. I'm like, you hear that? You hear, you hear my beard on the microphone? I'm thinking it was like the sound of the tortilla mix or something. Hilarious. Definitely too stoned. Or oh, just stoned enough, actually. I think I'm just stoned enough to be making a show that's this non linear and makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I would have to be a little stoned, right? So I, that's why I think I'm like just stoned enough. Because I'm talking to a camera, there's like no feedback, um, there's no live audience because this is not a live stream because I don't have my equipment set up yet. And I still have cables that are on the way, and I still have, you know, like I'm still cobbling together all of this video equipment I've been collecting over the years as a hobby, you know, because I've just barely done any kind of professional video work. I've just done a little bit here and there, and like it's always kind of a drag. I'd rather just do my own thing, make my own YouTube channel, and like maybe I'll get three patrons, and then I can pay patrons on the Patreon, and then if I have three that are each paying nine dollars a month then that will make me feel like I can pay my rent. And so even though it can't pay my rent, what it will do is it'll put me into a sense of abundance and then I'll start to attract things like Esther Hicks, Abraham Hicks style. And like, I'll be like listening to those in the morning and I'll get, be getting all inspired and like I'm creating my own reality. And then I realize that like I am, but it's a co-creation with uh, source energy. And so I'm not trying to control all the details of what's going to manifest for me and I'm not forcing things and I can feel it when I'm forcing it. And if I force it for too long, then it, the thing might manifest, but it might not be what I really wanted. It might be kind of a weird trip. That kind of happened to me once. And so I'm a little more careful about how I work with um, manifestation boards and energies and, you know, like it's, it's really a co-creation. You really got to chill and not be attached to having it happen a certain way but it is really nice to make vision boards and make 3d vision boards and like make websites that act as vision boards for what you want to create and bring into the world and you know what projects you want to be part of with people and collaborative you know like art projects and like taking the show on the road and tour bus where you create parties wherever you go and you've got a sound system and a video projection thing going and then you got like the merry pranksters joining you like the original guys that are like hanging out on your tour bus with you and you're doing like it's kind of like further but it's not because it's a tour bus it's not a school bus so it's a little bit different you know so there's like something like that going on maybe and then make sure that oh my god I'm just stuff's a bit falling over um you have to make sure that you have a good plate so the plate has to have a good like artwork on it because if you have some nice artwork to look at, there's less likely that you're gonna like get all depressed and negative about life. Cause look at this, this is just on a good vibe, you know, like this just reminds me that there are good vibes in the world, you know, and I can be on one. So now I'm gonna start pressing my tortillas and I've got these like, I've really gotta find parchment paper. This is kind of a temporary solution using this uh, patty paper. These are kind of not the most sustainable, so. I'm, uh, I'm just using them temporarily and then I'm going to be finding parchment paper that's cut to the right size. So anyway, 
this is how we do it. We put the ball in there. It doesn't have to be precise, but I kind of get the ball like toward the toward this part of the tortilla press more. So, and then I push it down a little bit like that, just to kind of start it, and then I finish it off. And make sure you never put your finger here. Like for some reason, I've never done it, but like, can you see like how much that would suck if this came down on your finger when it was right here? Yeah. So I'm like always thinking that for some reason, I'm like, ooh, make sure you don't put your finger there. So you push down like this to kind of get it started. And then you take this and I hope you can see this okay. Yeah, I need more cameras. But anyway, you go down like that. Okay, and then open it up. And voila! You have your tortilla. And guess what? This is already preheated. It's ready to roll. So I flip it onto my hand like this. I peel this back like this. I take it and I flip it. And there it goes, and there's a sizzle. It's very poetic. So then, that starts sizzling. Oh, and make sure you have your spatula, which I have a spatula on the wall here. And make sure it's big and silly, like a clown spatula, like, like this one. And then make sure you have this other weird, like, flipper thing that came with the crate maker that you can like, use in conjunction. So you have, like, this, like, thing you can do. Like, you could juggle these if you wanted. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of how that's working. So I'm going to keep... I'm not going to be distracted by, by flippers and spatulas. I'm just going to keep making my, my tortillas here. I'm going to keep pressing them. Because what I do is I press a bunch of them and then I put them in the freezer. So like I, I keep, so look, at, look how nice that comes out. So what you do is you just peel off the top, put it on the bottom, take this, put it on the plate, stack it, and then make the next one. And so you just keep doing that and then you end up with uh, one paper between each one. So, if we do this, yeah, and then you can either put them straight into the fridge if you're going to use them in a week or two, or you put them in the freezer and then like, really stock up on them, you know, like just make a ton of them, put them in the freezer, and then like be bringing them out as we need them. So, here is another one, and we just keep doing this. Keep doing this. And you know, if you've taken a little bit of LSD, you can make a lot of tortillas. I wouldn't know from experience, but I just I've heard heard that you could do that. So actually I would know from experience. I was at a festival once and I made infinite tacos. It felt like I was just making these tacos and our we had this little pop-up tent along the way on a kind of a busy path at the festival. It was at it was at um Spring Summit, that's where it was, back in 2012, and it was so fun because there's like all these random people stopping by our by our little uh, camp, and like we were making food for people and kind of like selling stuff by donation, you know, giving stuff away mostly, and like um, one of my friends was making grilled cheeses, and like I was uh, helping make tacos for everybody, and I just like kept. I was like in this loop of just like keep making tacos, passing them around. And I was just like going and going and going, more people showing up. Yeah, it was just such a fun, um, I, love, I love camping with people at festivals when it's like in a nice nature kind of setup in the trees and stuff. It's so fun. You create this little like forest village and everybody's like bonding, you know, and like just feels so tribal and natural to be li to be living that way for you know, if you're lucky, four days for a longer festival, it's pretty sweet. And then you just don't want to leave, and you're like, I gotta go back to the, quote, real world, and like, what the hell is that? And why don't I live in a, in a community already, like a village kind of thing? Um, and I guess we can, we just have to find our people, you know, find our tribe, and like, find the land, and uh, find the way to navigate the, the matrix and bureaucracy of it all, and the regulations, and the blah 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 use your left brain and do all that shit and then you gotta find the money so that's why i need three patrons because if one sorry patrons once i get three patrons paying nine dollars a month i am going to like launch into a um oh you know what i can start this other i can start this up this other camera i really could if i wanted to i'm gonna try it i just gotta go into the menu memory cards filling up all the time so crazy it's just this is not the way to do video the way to do it is live and it's being recorded to a hard drive and not to memory cards this is ridiculous okay so and I will get there I oh god I 
I don't know why this is taking so long. I'm just trying to change it to, to the internal memory on this camera. Here we go, media select, internal memory, fine. Thank you. Thank you, camera. Thank you, crappy old Sony camera that I used to love to use before I knew about cameras and quality. And now I'm like, oh man, the quality of that one, I just can't, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to use it as like an auxiliary camera or something. Cause now I'm spoiled by like nice quality video, you know? Okay, so I'm starting, I'm starting this recording back up now. Okay, so, and then we got this one still going. I see it. Looks like the battery's gonna run out probably, but it's got two bars. Okay, so now I think it's time to flip one of these. Uh, I'm gonna wash my, well, yeah, I'm gonna wash my hands because they're... Now I'm drying my hands. You can't see because I don't have enough cameras. Once I have enough cameras, then you'll be able to see me drying my hands. It's gonna be so entertaining, you know, like, aren't YouTubers so entertaining and Twitch streamers and all this stuff? I guess with the Twitch, at least there's a, something to focus on because you're, you're playing a game. You know, so if you're into playing a game, you can focus on a game. I need to get another, uh, I need another plate here. So I've got another plate, and so my plate looks like this. Can you see that? Yeah, okay, so um, God, I'm gonna have to edit this one. This is gonna be such a pain in the ass to like do the two cameras after I was saying I was not gonna edit it. But if I got two cameras, I gotta edit it. So this is why I wanna do it all live, and then I'm switching it live when I'm talking to you. So it's just. It's good for lazy people like me that don't want to edit. Okay, so these are still kind of working. You know, I'm still kind of working with these ones here. I, I can tell when the, the texture kind of changes on the top. There's kind of a signal they put out. They're like, okay, I'm ready to be flipped. And so in the meantime, I can still be pressing more tortillas than I'm putting in the fridge or the freezer. So, I'm, so then when my friends come over and they want to have tacos, we can make some like tempeh tacos. You know, like, because the tempeh tacos, most people can eat, you know, like if no matter what their stance is on meat, you know, because I personally, I, I do eat meat, but I only uh, pasture raise meat. I'm very strict about that. If, if I know it's coming from a, any kind of industrial or factory farm situation where the animals aren't cared for uh, in a good way, then I will not touch it. That's just how I feel about it it's that strongly. So everybody's got their different, like, um, their different ways of being, you know? And uh, so the tempeh tacos are really cool because you don't have to like worry about if someone's um, vegan or vegetarian. You know, it's like it just works for everybody. So I'm, doing, I'm experimenting with tempeh. And so if you have any good tempeh uh, cooking recipes for tacos, definitely post those on the Patreon and maybe we can share those all together because um, tempeh tacos are pretty awesome, especially when you have cassava tortillas. Yep, it's the grain-free, meat-free solution. Okay, so this one is ready. I'm gonna use, now I'm gonna use this, this stuff. Like, look at this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it just seems fun. So I could like, kind of like go like that, and then I could do some like acrobatics with it maybe. Like I could just kind of like flip it and be like, ooh, like, yeah, that's kind of cool. So like sometimes I could have it on that one and it could fall off and like I could just kind of pretend like it didn't and then I could kind of go back and forth. So I have to kind of practice. So like if it's okay, I'm just going to kind of practice on the shows, you know, where I'm just kind of like flipping it around and like it's probably going to go all over the place. But for now, I think this one's about cooked. I think that's about cooked. So congratulations. This is your first tortilla at Bon Mon's Nook. I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna serve it right to the camera so you can like see the steam coming off of it. But actually this camera's not good enough. I need a better camera because like this one, I don't know if it's gonna like pick up the steam or not, but good enough. So that's on the plate. Now we're kind of checking on these. We're checking on the state of our, what are we checking on? The state of the world? No, let's not check on the state of the world. Let's check on this, let's, let's keep it to just the state of the tortillas for now. We'll worry about the state of the world later, okay? Yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. So I, I really don't need to like have the NPR or the Fox News or the uh, CNN or the, what is it? Uh, the thought leaders. I don't need to have the thought leaders on, you know, I don't need to be like listening to the experts or the thought leaders about anything. Because what I found is that the experts and the thought leaders 
end up becoming um, becoming like what do they become like kind of like a circus like like this kind of dark clown circus you know where it's like a little off and a little distorted it's like yeah I don't really want to be at that circus I want to be at like uh, the synchronicity circus or like you know like the um, I want to be at the the dead show you know I don't I don't want to be at the the like weird distorted clown kind of um, you know, like media circus. Is that what it is? It's like a media circus and it's like a mind control device or something. But that's like getting into like a tinfoil kind of like reality and, and like that's okay. It's okay to go into a tinfoil reality. It's totally cool to go there, but it's like I don't want to spend my time there. It doesn't sound very fun. I don't want to be thinking about things that start with Q and like and like pizza things and weird, you know, like maybe stuff like that's going on, but I, even if it is, I don't want to be I don't want to be in that vibe, in that headspace. <laughs> I mean, I can't, you can't do everything. Like, you can't save every, everybody from everything. So you just got to focus on what you can do and do it well. And be, don't lie to yourself. Be authentic. Like, get, make sure you cook your tortilla the right way for you and not because you're worried about cooking it the right way for someone else. So I'm just cooking this for me. Like, I'm not cooking this tortilla for you. I'm not making these for you, actually. Like, if you were here, if you were actually at Bon Bon's Nook, like physically, and you were gonna actually eat them, then I would be making them for you. But in this case, I'm just making a few for myself. And then hopefully, like, if you, you could be making them at home for yourself too, you know? It's, it's just like, I'm not gonna be under some sort of delusion that you're actually here, you know? Like, I'll, I'll save that for another YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so, so I'm just having, you know, having friends over, you're one of my friends, um, virtual friend that I haven't met yet, and we're here at Bon Bon's Nook. And I'm just making this up as I go. I've been wanting to do this show for a long time, actually. I've had the name Bon Bon's Nook for a long time. A dear friend of mine nicknamed me Bon Bon, and it, and I, uh, it stuck, and I, I, I don't know where the nook came from, but just the, I just liked the way it sounded, Bon Bon's Nook, Bon Bon's Nook. Bon Bon's Nook. There's just a, it's just got a funny, you know, I like to, I like silly stuff, you know. I have a serious side, of, a serious old man side of me, so I have to really balance it out. And I find the way that I balance that out is like smoking lots of weed, um, making silly videos like this, and being in my creativity more and less in my logical left brain, like, so serious, gotta get those bills taken care of and check those statements and my make sure my 0% APR hasn't expired. And I need to be watching all of it all the time. And then I need to be looking for new opportunities to generate revenue. And I need to check my click funnel and what the fuck? I don't even have a click funnel. I don't want one. It's so weird. The science, scientific uh, user research studying people about their marketing, um, you know, for marketing and stuff. It's just like, so exhausting. I don't want to do that kind of website work anymore where you have to like do any kind of marketing mumbo jumbo with like click funnels and I don't know. I, it's just hard for me. It's not my, not my thing. I'm more of an artiste, more of a video person, I'm more of a video producer. I just, you know, have a silly YouTube channel now or a couple silly YouTube channels and probably some live streams and like probably like a website that you go on where you know, there's like a live stream that I'm running on my own server, so it's like not controlled by YouTube or Twitch, you know, and like you have more freedom and it's not that expensive. You just have to know how to set it up and how to navigate that shit. So I'm learning all that. I've still got a lot to learn. I'll probably be asking some friends for help, but I'm building my own streaming service for Bon Bon's Nook so that, um, just because it's fun actually, not because I'm worried about YouTube doing anything. It's just more for the principle of it, you know? So, can you see this stack here? Like, we've got a good stack going. This is a fat stack of tortillas. Like, these are going to be really nice to have later. So now, so I'm building security in my tortilla stash right now. Like, this is building up. I'm building up reserves. You know, I've got some, I've got some warm tortillas over here on this plate. So I've got warm tortillas on the plate. I gotta stop looking at the monitor. I've gotta look at the camera. So there's this thing about like wanting to look at the camera or like as a mirror. Like I'm not wanting to look in the mirror. I'm wanting to look at you through the lens. So I have to like 
train myself to like look at the lens even though the monitor is right here and it's tempting me constantly to look at it oh and did you know about zoom so okay of course you know about zoom no but i'm talking about like if you right click, so next time you're on a Zoom call, try right clicking on, and it's just assuming you have the latest version of, of Zoom, it's been auto updated and blah, blah, blah. And so if you have that, you can right click on your video preview that's showing you on the meeting and you can turn off your camera. And it's not turning off your camera in that, that people can't see you, it's just turning off. So it's not called turning off your camera, it's called turning off your, your preview or whatever. You know, turning off the view of you that's showing up to just to you. And so you do that, and I did that on a meeting just a few days ago. Like, I don't know how long they've had this feature. I think it might be newer, because um, I had checked before I had right-clicked on things. You know, I was like, come on, they gotta give you some way to turn this off. I think a lot of the Zoom fatigue was actually uh, a result of having your preview on the screen all the time. And so if you know you're in the frame generally, like you're staying still and you have a, a wide enough shot, it's like, why do you need to see yourself constantly in that preview? You don't need it. It's distracting. It's pulling your attention away from the people in the meeting because you're looking at yourself. So it's some weird narcissist trip that's been like in, unintentionally, I guess, put into Zoom, and, but now they're shifting it. So they're letting you turn off your narcissist trip if you want, but you have to know where to go. You have to know thy settings again. So yeah, it's just, I was excited to see that you could turn it off and I felt like so much less fatigued coming out, out of a meeting now because I don't have to worry about like seeing a preview of myself and checking it constantly and you know it's like I can just focus on the people on the meeting. Isn't that sweet? It's very nice. I felt like I was able to connect with them better actually. Like I felt more of a heart a heart connection whereas uh, usually I feel more disconnected. And so I think um, I think that's kind of a big a big shift uh, allowing that to happen on Zoom. And that's gonna be, as long as people find out about it, you know, it's gonna really help people out. It sure helped me. So, oh my God, I just accidentally turned on the water kettle. Maybe I'm supposed to make some water. Hmm. So I need, I'm gonna still make a few more tortillas here while we're waiting for these last ones to cook. One thing that's really cool sometimes, I don't know if you can see this, but um, they actually puff up. Sometimes they puff up for you. They, they have a little personality, you know, they start to like do this like puffing action. It's really cool. So, oh, wait, I didn't mean to cook that. I was trying to. So I'm accidentally cooking towards, this is the thing that happens sometimes when you're cooking, um, I'm looking at the other camera, I don't know why. Um, this is what happens sometimes when you have the tortilla cooking happening at the same time as the tortilla uh, pressing. And so with the tortilla pressing, you can, if you're just focusing on that, you can really build up a good stack. I keep looking at this preview. I'm gonna like turn it so I can't see it. I think that's gonna be the key. Okay, so now I can't see myself. I've turned it off just like with Zoom, like I cannot see a preview. And so that means that if I hold something up, it might be, yeah, I might not be able to get it in the right spot, but we're just gonna have to go on faith. Sometimes you just gotta go on faith. You know, faith in something. Okay, so I'm gonna stack this. Dun, dun, dun. We need some music. Will someone DJ? That would be, yeah, if someone could DJ, that'd be awesome. Gotta get Sean from Church of Chill to DJ. Sean, if you're listening, please, please come DJ at Bon Monza. We'll figure out the Spotify feed, how to send it. Send it correctly. Use like a streaming um, tool like Mix, like MixLR or something like that. What it's called, I gotta ask my friend. Oh, almost. Yeah, so we're getting close to the bottom of the barrel here, and I'm about ready to head back to the bed in with my tortillas. Okay, that's not coming off yet. That's actually staying on there. I'm too stoned for this, or I'm not stoned enough for this. Maybe that's what it is. You just never know. Which way is it? So this is going to flip. This is going to... Ooh, look at that browning. Can you see that? Yeah, that got some browning on there. That's pretty cool got browning. So this one's done. It's got browning. It's definitely done. So the nice thing about these tortillas is, is that they're really forgiving, so you can't really overcook them. 
all they do is get a little crispy, but they don't like actually burn, burn. As long as you have the heat on medium, you know, something reasonable. If you had it on high, then I'm sure they would burn, but uh, they're very forgiving. And sometimes with the browning, you end up getting like little faces and things. Like this one almost has a smiley face. So like there's like a, um, two eyes there, kind of a nose with the brown spots and then like a little smiley face. And I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, probably not. So I'm gonna have a setup where I can zoom in the camera with a little controller. And so I could be like, hey, check out this tortilla. Check out the Mother Mary showing up on my tortilla. And it's, you don't believe me? And then I'll hit the little zoom thing. I'll just be like, Rrr. and then this, this camera, this tortilla cam will like come in close because I'll have a camcorder that actually zooms. Yeah, so. It's gonna be cool. I, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, I know I'm gonna enjoy it. And as long as um, as long as there's three three people watching, you know, it doesn't really matter beyond that. As long as I'm enjoying it and the three people are watching it, who are watching it, are enjoying it, then we're we're set. Yeah, we are set. And so, um, if you join the Patreon, then you can. <laughs> If you join the Patreon, that's being said a lot by a lot of people right now, like in this exact moment. Um, if you join the Patreon for just number nine dollars a month, then you get access to send messages to Bon Mon's Nook. And Bon Mon's Nook staff will consider your message and then decide if you are worthy of being a guest on Bon Mon's Nook. And so, and really the only requirement for that is that you're just on a compatible vibe and it's not going to be awkward and weird to have you come on the show. That's all that means. It doesn't mean you have to have any accomplishments or be anybody special or certain. Just everybody's special, but you don't have to be anybody that's recognized for something special. You know, like, like some podcasts are, you know, where they want to have the big guests and they want to have the iTunes ratings and they want to have the number of comments for the algorithm so we can get better guests on and so it's like this continual growth process of like let's get better guests so you need to make sure to leave me a review on the on the itunes on the stitcher on the you know on the apple music on the how many names have there been on the spotify you know it's like you gotta leave me a re review for the algorithm you gotta feed the beast feed the algorithm so that we can attract bigger guests to have on the show. They're gonna have more of an ego and more of an agenda to pitch something. And then that's gonna make the show into a piece of shit. So that's not the route I'm gonna go with Bon Bon's Nook. Nope. But you do have to be a patron. You do have to be a patron to send a message to ask to come on the show. That's the only requirement. So I'm really sorry if $9 is too much for that. Then that just kind of filters out the people that are just trying to sell me a book, okay? Or not me a book. Did I just say okay? Like I'm. Well, that was weird. I don't even know what that was. Um, yeah, it'll it'll filter people out that um, would just be trying to sell something lame. And yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not saying a book is lame, but you just you know what I mean. Like they might be just more of a hustler and like not, we. Bonbon's Nook is not a place for hustlers and hustling and like. It's more about trusting that if you have a good product that people are going to be attracted to it naturally and you don't need to force it and push it and try to like have some sort of 10x growth and have blah 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 you know it's like just more of a slow organic growth process of what project you're doing and not having to like talk too much about it but just let it come up in conversation and like it's just kind of a natural thing it's more about the person it's not so much about the project but like the project will come up if it makes sense so i hope this is recording God. Oh, it's not even recording. Oh my God. I can't believe that. I never hit record. So basically the audio is only gonna come off. Oh, jeez. That is so frustrating. I cannot believe I did that. It's got a red light on the top that makes it look like the record. Yeah, now I'm recording. Oh my God. I can't, I can't believe that. So, that is just forcing me to, to, to let go of my attachment of the audio being good because this whole time I've been monitoring this, this microphone right here, which sounds really good and it's picking me up really well. But now to, to find out that the audio recorder wasn't recording because I don't use this enough and it's like, it's been in storage and stuff and now I just pulled it out. So now I'm like getting familiar with my equipment on the fly with making this show and I'm messing things up. So you get to be here with me. The, with, th you get to be here with me through the process of me figuring shit out 
and like not hitting the record button on a stupid recorder on the zoom recorder speaking of zoom right a different kind of zoom it's called a zoom recorder it's not the zoom the video chat zoom it's like a different thing but yeah so i forgot to hit the record button on that and so now these cameras are going to be the only thing that pick me up but you know what it's probably going to be fine because that one has a good microphone up there and so you know like if i can even like yeah so that one's got the tortilla my the tortilla cam has a good microphone so we're fine i'm just going to drink some water and calm down because i can just feel myself getting worked up about not hitting the record button It's time to do a little meditation. I think it's time to do a tortilla meditation. So I'm going to meet you back at the bed in. I guess that's what we're calling that studio room, the bed in. I gotta figure out a better name. So if someone has a better name for the other part of the studio set here at the cottage studio, when it, it's funny. Like I moved into this place as kind of like an office and, a, and then it becomes a house and then it, becomes like the only place I'm living because my relationship has shifted and now it's becoming a video studio in a tiny cottage, which you wouldn't normally think of, but it's actually making a lot of sense when I put it in the context of making a, a silly solo YouTube channel like this, because then I can set up cameras everywhere and it can, they can just fixed in the space and I don't have a partner anymore that's like concerned with clutter in the house. You know, I'm not sharing a house with someone anymore. So it's like, uh, I can put cameras exactly where I want them and mount everything exactly how it should be for this show. And I can keep evolving it into this creative process. So I can't wait to show people on the Patreon. I'll go around with a camera and like show you the setup and like how everything is connected and wired and like set up for live streaming, which we're gonna get to. And I, this thing is starting to puff up here, this tortilla. So I better stop talking and just get back to my tortilla meditation and like flip this and Yes, and now we have good sound quality, of course, at the very end and whatever, you know, I'll sync it all up. This is ready to go in the sink to be washed. And since I did my dishes today, I have the satisfaction of having a sink that is clean and empty and ready for a bowl to go into it. And that is a good feeling. And that is Virgo. We're in the Virgo season right now, the Virgo energy. I've been making to-do lists. I've been crossing, I've crossed two things off. I've got like 12 items on it. So I'm making really good progress. I'm still like, um, still adding to it. You know, I've got all these ideas that I keep adding. And so I would rather just be making ideas and adding them to the to-do list instead of actually like crossing things off. But it's Virgo season, so it's actually easier to cross things off. So it's all going really well. I'm sorry, I'm talking way too fast. I need to slow down. I need to slow down and breathe. I need to do my breathing exercises. I need to go meditate. I need to smoke another bowl. There's a lot of things I need to do. I need to check off more than to do, two to-do items on my to-do playlist. I'm calling it a to-do playlist now. And to do, there's different types of to-do playlists, but, but when you put play in there, it makes it a lot more fun. And if you draw on the to-do playlist, then that makes it even more fun. And I have a, why am I doing this by fingers? I have a spatula that I need to be learning how to do tricks with. Holy shit, that was... Okay, let's try that again. So can I flip it with this one? So like, I'll flip it. Can you see that? Okay, I'll flip it with this one and then... I'll catch it with this one. Here we go. And so if I, if I had, um, if I wanted to go in and edit this and spend a bunch of time and make it a full-time job, then I could go in and be like, put in music and do all this stuff. But I'd rather just have that done live so I don't have to go back and edit it because I'm probably not gonna do it. And then it will just never happen. So if I could trigger some music right now, I could just like hit something on my smartphone and be like, um, tortilla flipping music. Okay, I just go boom, and then that starts up in the OBS, and then I just flip this, and then, and then it ends up exactly where it was supposed to go, and then we close that, and the end. Tortillas are done. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm gonna actually I shouldn't leave that in there. I might forget about it. Um, I'm gonna take these tortillas back to the bed in, which will have a better name once someone on the Patreon joins first and then sends me a message to tell me what that what that set should be named instead of the bed in the bed in is like an artifact from another youtube channel i was just doing because so now i have two and i can't tell you about the other one because it's embarrassing so 
yeah. But it's not like, there's no nudity in it. It's not like that. It's not that kind of embarrassing. It's more embarrassing in like what I'm sharing and like how, yeah, I'm just, and who I'm talking to. It's like I'm talking to someone specific or something. It's weird, like, yeah. The other, stay away from the other one unless, unless you're like a single woman or something, you know, that it'll make more sense. <laughs> I think I just told you what, <laughs> what the channel was, but I'm not going to tell you where to find it. There we go. There we go. That way, only the people that are meant to find it will find it. And that's a good way to go. So, we have our peace sign. I'm going to say, peace until I see you on the next camera, in the next room, in about 15 seconds. Because it's not live, I'm not doing this live switching like I'd like to be doing. Like, I'd like to just have the cameras, you know, switch, don't, don't, don't follow me as I walk to the other room. I think that would be more interesting than just cutting. It's just like I'm teleporting. It's like if we want this to be consistent, like you really feel like you're hanging out at the cottage at Bonbon's Nook. See, like I even have a sign. Can you see that? I have a sign that says Bonbon's Nook. Like I, made, I, I swear I didn't make it for this YouTube channel. Like this YouTube channel came after I made the sign. So you can see, like, let me, I have to flip this back, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so bottom on snook. That I need to remake the sign though because my friend pointed out that it's out of balance because look at there's a moon and then another moon. So I'm like, oh I'm in too much of the the yin energy. I need to balance it with a sun up here. So it's the yin and the yang, it's balanced and it's bottom on snook. And I might change this picture in the background because it's not really the right picture. I need to like do some sort of different design or like something in the background. So if someone has okay, someone wants to join the Patreon. This is another way for me to make $9. It's awesome. And you can quit after one month. It's not like you need to you can just join for $9 just to send your artwork in. And if it's good enough and meant to be the background to this frame, I will actually put it in there. I'm going to take this glass out and reprint this. And I will put your background photo behind the tortilla plate. And you'll see it on the next Bon Mons Nook. Because I think the intro is probably going to have like you know, this, it's going to probably be like this wall over here where this is, the, the intro will be like starting on that, you know, and there'll be like some, some trippy lights or something, lighting it up, you know, look like we're at a festival at night, the country fair, and like we're, we're going to all the interesting food booths that you, nobody really knows about because you have to be part of fair family and it's very exclusive and all that trip, you know, um, but you know, I love Oregon country fair. I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a special thing, and it's it's special that it's um, you know at the nighttime the people that work so hard to put the festival on during the daytime, at the nighttime they get to like take a load off and actually enjoy themselves uh, after they've been working the whole day like volunteering to put on the festival. So it really has to stay that way and be that way for for the Oregon Country Fair specifically to work because hardly anybody is being paid at, at the fair. It's like so, almost all volunteers running the thing. So it's very different and they don't have cor corporate sponsorships and changing the vibe, you know, like, so it's a very pure um, festival, um, OregonCountryFair.org if you want to look it up. Anyway, and it's got roots. It started in 1969, same year as Woodstock, which is just a trip and it's kept going on. It's been sustainable. Whereas Woodstock, you know, was just in that too much, too much, too much, too quick weren't able to keep it going but um Oregon Country Fair they own the land now so they've owned it for quite a while so there's an, a rootedness and established uh nature of that festival with owning owning land it floods every year which makes it interesting like they have to put everything up high with the booths and everything it's kind of trippy yeah it's a trippy situation um okay so I've been I've been taking forever but I just want to show you like Look how many tortillas I have ready to go. So I'm going to put these in the fridge or freezer now um, before I go to the other room. So I need to find like a, here we go. Here we go. I've got like a big container that I can put these in. There we go. And so this, this is like a seven inch torti uh, tortilla container. This is a seven inch um, um, Tupperware thing. You can find a grocery outlet somewhere cheap. And then you've got it. You've got your tortillas ready to go. And look how many this will hold. Like I could have made like so many more and then just have them all ready to go in the fridge. And any excess overflow I can put in the freezer. So this is what I do. This is my, this is my routine. So I'm putting this in the fridge and then I'm gonna have fresh hot tortillas made in like a couple of minutes because I'm just gonna flip it onto this preheated 
uh, crepe cooker and then which is its own tortilla cooking station so if you're like if you got other people over making food like making other ingredients for the tacos you can be over on the counter just plugged into the wall with this um, this crepe maker that's all it requires and then you can just be self-contained making the tortillas and that's so that's what i'm that's the way i've set this up so i can just like show up at a party show up at a festival offer have a community food offering you know by donation or just just as a free offering and um serve these tortillas for either for tacos or for putting butter on or for coconut oil if you don't eat butter um, there's a lot of different ways to to roll with it i just personally like grass-fed butter on them really uh, quite a bit and you can gr get grass-fed butter really cheap at grocery outlet so I, i'm sorry i keep talking about grocery outlet i swear that they're not sponsoring this it's just that that's where me and my friend like her and i we go there for food all the time you know we're just we know how to navigate the grocery outlet here in this town where we're at. Um, I'll just tell you, we're in Eugene. So here in Eugene, um, yeah, it's like um, the, the Eugene grocery outlet is is known for having um, really good deals on uh, foods that you normally wouldn't think would be at a grocery outlet, like, um, you know, natural foods and, and very like healthy stuff there's a lot that could be found there in abundance too so i'm not worried about it like the secret getting out or something it's just like a, so it's just a little tip you know a little hippie tip so yeah my friend uh she was gonna start uh something yeah I'll, i wasn't gonna no i won't talk about it because it's not started okay so um i think i'm ready to go back to the bed in and smoke some more weed with my tortillas and some butter. Okay, I'll see you over there.